Hi, my name is Lina and welcome to this episode about remixing. And in this episode I will go through things like how to set up your own remix session, sampling, drum beats, sample manipulation and arrangements. So if you want to learn all that stuff, then watch this video. <laughs> Welcome to LNA Does Audio Stuff. Welcome! Today's uh, episode is all about remixing. So, people have been asking me, Lena, how do I do remixing? What does it mean? How should I do it? Where should I start? How? Uh, how? So, last week I actually introduced a remix competition in my video. So, I'm gonna link it up here. here. And if you want to attend to the remix competition, it's open till 4th of May 2020. You can win this ABC Mini MIDI controller. Yeah! So if you want to uh, remix my husband's first ever beat, then please head that way and I would love to hear your remixes. So remixing, what it is? What is it? So it's hard to actually teach a certain way of just doing a remix because remix is a personal expression of your musicality as a producer. So it's your artistry. It can be anything. So it can be a sound design. It can be 10 minutes of a sonic, beautiful mess. Sometimes it depends on the genre, what the client wants you as a remixer. Sometimes, example, a pop artist can have a song that can be a bit more acoustic. And what they want is to create a version of that song that is more accessible for radio, clubs or festivals. So example, a bit more dancey version of that song, so it can be bought more and more people know it. So these techniques and tips are good for any kind of genre, with any door you want to use, but I do teach them through Ableton Live, because I like Ableton Live. So that's why in this video I want to introduce tips and tricks like techniques on how you can create your own remix and where to start. So these techniques will help you to create your own workflow and you will make sure that nobody sounds like you. So here are my five top tips for remixing. Also, in this point, please subscribe to this channel, 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 channel. Please subscribe to this channel and please hit the bell icon. So the first point is downloading and uploading stems. So what stem means is that, example, this song that my husband produced in the last episode, I have put it in the SoundCloud. The song is in stems. And what that means is that I have all the elements, all the tracks, export it separately. So now you as a remixer can download either all of them or just one of them and just put them on your computer, import them into your session and start remixing them up. So example, when I download them, they went automatically to my downloads folder. So I can just drag them into the session. Sometimes you might have just the full song as full full thing. So then the process is slightly different, so then you cannot really work on drums or the synths or bass separately. So if you work in Ableton Live, in this point you want to think about will you work in session view or an arrangement view, because the workflow will be different. Are you going to work in a linear way where you can example slice things up in a linear view? Or are you going to be using session view where you can example loop certain sections of the stems and then that's that way create your new remix of the song. Next thing you need to think about is the tempo, the BPM of the song. Are you going to make it uh, faster? Are you going to make it slower? So in this point what you need to think is warping. Do you need to warp any of the samples so attach them to time when you are making the song slower or faster? And we need to do warping so that we can make sure that when we change the tempo, the samples are keeping in the tempo. They're not changing pitch or length of the sample. You click any of the samples, you activate the warp button in the screen and then also we can just activate the loop button. That's on time. And if I just make that little bit faster, it's still on time. And in this point also just make sure that when you're importing the stems into your session, 
Do you want to use the whole part or do you want to just create smaller, shorter sample of it? So example, I have the base here. So let's warp it first. And now I can just choose if I want to use the whole clip as it was imported into the session or do I just want to use eight bars of the sample or just example, a one bar. So the number two technique is, number two technique is a sampler. So sampler is something that is super easy. So instead of importing everything in the session view or arrangement view, you can actually just create a couple tracks with samplers in them. So that we can add a sampler, we need to go to the menu, you go to instruments, and then you go to the sampler and you can just drag and drop it to the empty space. So it adds a new MIDI channel and adds the instrument called sampler in it. So now you can just take any of the samples you were working on, drag and drop it into the black area there that says drop sample here. Now you can see that sample is in the sampler. So we can play with the pitch in the oscillators here, as well as the envelopes. I can also add modulation. So I can example control the pitch with the uh, modulation uh, and using the different LFOs to create different effects on on the whole sample. I also want to show quickly uh, simpler. So simpler is slightly different sampler. So let's say it's vocal. So I need to go and look for a vocal track. So let's put that yay and then slice it up. And then of course you can automate the pitch of the simpler to create interesting structures. So yeah, you get the point. You can use the samples so that the, the song is still there, but you use them to create something completely new and something completely different. And you can use them to create rhythmic elements and uh, 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 yeah, a lot of cool stuff. Are you making tea? Could I have one please? Okay, part three, tip, a technique, te yeah, three, <laughs> is sample manipulation. It's one of my favorite techniques, totally, uh, because it allows me to be really creative and make things really fun. So I usually personally use the sampler and then sample manipulation kind of uh, together. So the first thing I would say is pitch shifting. <laughs> You can stretch the samples or you can make them shorter. So the first two from these two compresses it to uh, make faster. If I click it twice, it will go even faster. If I click the other two, it will stretch it. Another one, even more. You can reverse the samples. You can reverse it from the REV. And hey, then don't underestimate the basic, basic editing tools. So example, uh, duplicating, repeating anything, any sections, any time sections, looping and consolidating things together. So example, you can cut little pieces, maybe pitch shift them a little bit to create some really interesting uh, melodic sequencing and then just consolidating them together. So number four is beats. So it's very good addition to the techniques that we already talked about. So example, if you are now wanting to make this song a dance song. So it's super, 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 super easy to do. You are gonna add example, a drum, just one of the drum kits from the presets, if you like one of those. And then you just create the, uh, the drums on the genre you would like to do. If you're confused about the different genres, and how to create a certain uh, example house beat or techno beat 
or drum and bass beat. Then I've actually created a video about it where I show all the basic structures of the beats and how to click them into the MIDI editing window. So I'm gonna link it up here if you would like to look and then you can just create easily the beat that you would like to do. And then hey, number five. So number five is actually all about arrangement. So arrangement is one of the most important things when you are doing remix. So let's say you have a song with vocals. Would you like to have all the choruses and the verses in the right place? If you are doing more a radio edit type of thing, you might want to follow the, like, the original structure. But if you're completely doing a new mashup of the whole thing, then maybe you can just put the vocals in a sampler and start playing around and just seeing if there's actually little pieces of the vocals that you're gonna make a new hook. So let's say you have an acoustic song, you create an EDM song out of it, you might wanna use one of the sentences from the chorus to create a hook that you can then dance to. I have also created a whole video about creating arrangements and how you can take it from like from the beginning to the end and how you can easily create a really interesting and cool arrangement. So I'm gonna link it up here. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching this video and please come again and next week there will be something new, something awesome and please look at the uh, remix competition. I really hope to hear your song soon and just basically link me to any of your rem remixes because I really want to hear if you have done remixes and did these techniques work for you? Did you manage to do a remix? Uh, please let me know. Please follow me on social medias. Uh, and I will see you next time.